We're going to be talking today about your postpartum experience, both after delivery in the hospital and what to expect as you transition home. After you deliver a baby, you should expect to be bleeding somewhat like a heavy period. Uh, this bleeding will transition over the first couple of weeks into a lighter red and it will become a little bit watery. Some women bleed for six to eight weeks. Other women bleed for shorter amounts of time. Oftentimes the uterus still has some fragments of the conception still in it and it needs to clean itself out. So it's very common to have a little um, resumption of bleeding. As long as it stops, we're okay with that. If you start to bleed very heavily and you're saturating a pad in an hour or passing large clots, we'd want you to call your provider and ask assistance. Usually preeclampsia is a condition that can occur during pregnancy and it's associated with high blood pressures and protein in the urine. However, a few women may develop preeclampsia after delivery. So if you notice that you have a headache that's getting worse, not relieved by Tylenol, or if your swelling becomes worse and worse, especially after day three postpartum, these can be reasons that we would want to check your blood pressure and to have you notify your provider. Ibuprofen is an excellent source of pain relief as well. It doesn't cause any kind of constipation or abdominal side effects and it doesn't go into the breast milk. This pain can often get a little bit worse as the body has some swelling in the first couple of days after delivery. However, after approximately day three postpartum, you should gradually see an improvement in that pain. So one of the things that you can do in the postpartum period that's non-pharmacological to help with this perineal pain is something called a sitz bath. It's a small basin of water that's filled with Epsom salts and you can soak your, your bottom in that three times a day and that helps with the swelling and the pain and it's a nice non-medication that you can do at home. No, your stitches should actually dissolve on their own um, by your six week postpartum visit. If you're having stitches that haven't dissolved by that point um, or are bothersome, let your provider know and they can remove them at that visit. Usually hemorrhoids will shrink up and not be problematic after the first six to 12 weeks. During this time, it can be important to avoid constipation. So for example, if you are taking pain medication uh, that can be associated with constipation, such as the Norco or hydrocodone or oxycodone, please take a stool softener uh, in order to avoid constipation. Please drink a lot of water and eat fiber in your diet. And these are things that can also be of help. So abdominal binders can be helpful initially after you've had a C-section and they can help provide stability while you're walking around. But only in that short term we find them to be that helpful. If you wear them for long term, your abdominal muscles might actually become more lax. So when you're able to get up and move around without pain, we actually suggest removing the abdominal binder to help strengthen your abdominal muscles. In general, most women are going to be breastfeeding during those first few weeks, and we really want women to focus on that um, and not to do a lot more. The exercise, though, can be very helpful and walking can, in a week or two after delivery can be a great way to regain um, muscle tone in the abdomen. As women are further and further postpartum, they can increase their exercise. And my rule of thumb that I like to tell my patients is if they're in pain or the exercise is causing them discomfort, take a break and try again in another week. If they have more bleeding the day after they've increased exercise, that might be another sign that their body is telling them to slow down and try again in another week. Be kind to yourself. It took nine months to grow the baby. It might take that long, if not longer, to get back to your pre-pregnant weight. Initially, after the baby's born, you lose about 13 pounds with the placenta, all that fluid. Um, so that happens right away. And breastfeeding is a natural way for your body to help burn extra calories because you actually need more calories while you're breastfeeding. 
about 500 to 700 versus while you were pregnant. But we do say one of the main goals during that period is to really, really focus on that breastfeeding and not necessarily focus on that uh, weight loss journey. But you can resume some physical activity as your body tolerates it over the few weeks and months. And it will take a while, so we want you to be kind to yourself and listen to your body's cues. The answer to this question may vary depending on the type of delivery experience, but many women can resume having intercourse by six to eight weeks post-delivery if they would like to do so. However, the stitches um, in a, during a vaginal delivery may be only partially healed at that point, and some women have discomfort. If they do have discomfort, they should wait for at least another couple of weeks before reattempting intercourse. However, nothing will break during that time as long as your physician has had the chance to do an exam and make sure that everything is healing well. As long as your provider has had a chance to do an exam and make sure everything is healing well. That being said, we also want to ensure that you have a plan for birth control in place prior to having sex. Many women who are breastfeeding, especially those who are breastfeeding exclusively, may not get their period. However, when, when they are, um, if, should they become pregnant while breastfeeding, that will have a rapid impact of diminishing the milk supply. So it's very important that women are able to uh, make choices that will support their breastfeeding and family planning goals. Postpartum sex can be different from pre-pregnancy sex, and everyone has different values associated with this and different motivations. So what we tell people is when you're ready is the right time. So there are many, many changes that occur in the postpartum period. Oftentimes you're adjusting to being a new mother. This is a whole new role for you. You might not feel interested at that time in having sex. You might be very focused on breastfeeding. You might be sleep deprived and it might just not feel right for you. We encourage you to talk to your partner about this and get on the same page. It's perfectly okay and normal not to feel in the mood for sex at that time. I also wanted to add that for women who are breastfeeding, because the, the hormone levels in her body may be very low, it's important for her to know that a, um, using lubricants that are widely available on the market can significantly diminish any discomfort that she may have during sex. The postpartum course can vary from woman to woman. Take care of yourself, listen to your body, and get the support you need in order to recover from pregnancy and delivery.